about this? Let's just uh, align our hearts and minds. And Oh, by the way, let me share something with you and then we will. Uh, so I've just tried to put together a little bit of a uh, visual or graphic of trying to uh, express a little better how to align ourselves, our spirit and soul and body. And we got a triune being, spirit, soul, and body with a triune God, Holy Spirit, Son, and Father, Father, Son. And... I put Father on the right because uh, Jesus sits at his right hand and assuming that he's looking our way, then Father needs to be on the left. And then Jesus would have to be in the left side of him from our perspective. And then Holy Spirit, I don't know where he goes. Uh, he's just everywhere, I guess. I'm not sure exactly if he has a chair. Does he have a chair on the throne? You guys, I need some professional, high-level answers on that one. <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting in us. Oh, okay. Look at there. <laughs> Good job. Well, the truth is they all are, and Jesus is too. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So it depends on what truth we're featuring. Kind of gives a different perspective for each uh, each uh, visual. But anyway, uh, I, so I put spirit on top and notice that our spirit and soul are resting in our body, but that's not always true because... In one sense, our spirit's already raised and seated with Christ. And then if we go on spirit travel, our body's still here in the natural realm, physical realm, but we've gone on some kind of spirit soul travel. So, you know, there's a lot of breakdowns when you try to do a, a graphic because it just depends on what perspective you're talking about. So if you guys could come up with one that fits all, one size fits all, uh, I would be interested. <laughs> but so uh, take a look. We got our three parts. And then you see under Holy Spirit, there's this arrow that goes down to our spirit. And I think, you know, generally speaking, our spirit and Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God are communing all the time. I believe our spirit's already raised seated with Christ and it's in communion it's perfect holy complete you know it's righteous it's it's perfect in every way our spirit man now I do think that sometimes we tend to uh, if we don't if we don't nurture our spirit man it can tend to dumb down or get sluggish or sleep but then our given the normal and natural and I think or uh, heavenly order then our spirit man should feed our soul and our soul should feed our body and we can all think of verses that would probably substantiate that so there's this kind of as uh ronald reagan used to say uh trickle i think it was him uh i think it was him used to say the trickle down theory was that him I don't know if that's Ronald Reagan. But anyway, we got trickle-down theory from Holy Spirit to our spirit to our soul to our body. But it doesn't always happen that way. It seems like sometimes God trumps it and he goes straight from his spirit to our soul for inner healing or from his spirit, even physical healing, to our body. So anyway, there are options there. The point being that my body cannot be in charge nor can my soul if I want to be in at this time what I believe to be heavenly order so just a little visual there so if you uh, don't mind we will just kind of speak to our being just a little bit and we will also ascend now, I realize we're all at different places I have my own challenges in that, meaning my challenges of seeing, hearing, experiencing. So I'm growing. But my point is, for me, what I believe is valid and worthy is that I exercise that direction. As I exercise, as I flex my 
muscle, so to speak, my faith muscle, it becomes easier and easier and the territory that we're reaching for and that we're experiencing is not unusual anymore. It doesn't hold that kind of novel, kind of, oh, this is crazy, uh, oh, uh, you know, we begin to become more familiar with it so that not only are we comfortable with where we're stepping into, but we're more easily, uh, it's easier to then to acclimate even to the further new area. So I understand that there, we're all in different places in our ability to see and actually travel to this position. But it's already true in our spirit man. It's already true there. What we're wanting to do is to, ooh, this is touching me, is to bring our soul man into unity, conformity, or sync with where our spirit man already is. So it's not weird. It's not like this is crazy. No, we're just trying to experience the greater reality of what our spirit man is already experiencing. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for entreating us so wonderfully, so gently, so tenderly, so tenderly as to be winsome and make us want to go into this territory with you. So, Jesus, today, we just begin now by calling our being, our spirit, soul, and body into proper order. My spirit man, I acknowledge you. I validate you. I celebrate you as being a leader of my being, of my personhood. I bless you, my spirit man, to be strong, to stand up tall, to be bold and courageous, to be a, an amazing conduit of the commodities of heaven right out of the Spirit of God through you into my soul and body. I bless you. You are wonderfully created as a new creation. And you're enjoying the environs of heaven right now and have been since the moment of my salvation. And I bless you now to just be ever increasingly, uh, uh, you release those, those awesome facets of heaven's realities to my soul and to my body. My soul man, I bless you now that you're agreeable, you're harmonious, you're complementary to my spirit man. You work in tandem. You work as a great partner with my spirit man. And you, the one from probably where my emotions come from, I bless, I bless you, my soul man, to, to deliver the proper emotions, the emotions that are in line with Father's heart and with heaven's realities and with the truth, capital T, truth, Jesus himself. I bless my mind to function wonderfully clearly, single, pure. Oh, to function uh, with, with skill and to process well. I bless you, my mind. In my will, just speak over you to bathe you now with just heaven's atmosphere and my blessing. And that out of that seat of my core of my soul man where my will resides and where decisions are made and and the very essence of directions are decided i bless that to be hovered over like genesis 1 where the spirit of god hovered over the face of the deep 
I bless you, my will. And my body, oh, thank you. You've been a great host. You've done great for me. I am so proud of you that you've hosted me so well, taken me so many places that my spirit and soul said, let's go there, and you complied. You did awesome. You just did awesome. And I bless you now just to uh, not only continue in great health, but as sicknesses, diseases, and different things like that pop up, that body, you're going to be a great recipient of all of the wealth and the health that comes from the heavenly regions through my spirit and soul. I bless you, my body, to uh, just be eager to partner with my soul and my spirit. I also bless you, my body, and I'm going to just speak now to my cells who have the memory in them that says they're going to have apoptosis or a death cycle. And I bless you, my body, to begin to have a restructuring, as Paul Bell says, a reconstruction revival, even on my cellular level, so that my cells begin to think in terms of everlasting life. I bless you, my cells. I bless you, my body. Jesus said, if I live and believe in him, I shall never die. So I bless you, body. You're going to begin now to orient. You're turning like a ship is turning at sea. A ship is turning. Nonetheless, you're turning now into everlasting life so that my body would live as long as my spirit. And I think that is a very long time. Thank you, body, soul and spirit. Now together, Lord, together as a group, we just step up into heavenly places. Lord, I see myself and I see us as a group here on this screen. I see us now just ooh, right up into heavenly territory. So easy, Lord. Just walk through the door, Jesus. And there we are inside. In fact, everybody, let's just do a little activation here. Uh, let's breathe in Yah and breathe out Way. Yahweh. Let's breathe in Yah and out Way. Just as since we're inside of Jesus right now, let's breathe Him in. When you breathe in, let's just hold it just a minute, just as, however long is comfortable. Just hold it though, and and you see in the natural we'll breathe in in oxygen, but now we're in the heavenly realm and we're breathing in Jesus. And as we breathe him in, just like oxygen would go through our lungs and into all the systems of our body, I don't think it's any different. We're breathing in Jesus. See Jesus coursing through to every system, literally renewing us, literally, as scripture says, regenerating us. So here we go. Now, I literally have physical sensations about that. And I just feel there is a very, very real, very dynamic infusion that's taking place. We, we understand blood transfusions. And so there's a transfusion or infusion taking place. Let's do it one more time, if you don't mind.
I hear it said that blood that's freshly oxygenated is more reddish and blood that has gone through our arteries and now is on its way back to our heart through our veins is less red and maybe even more bluish or maroonish or whatever. So the oxygen actually revitalizes, makes it vibrant, makes it filled with life. And why would it be any different as we, by faith, now begin to breathe in, take in, ingest the very substance of Jesus himself? Jesus said, if you eat of me and drink my blood, you will never die. 